Today we're going to be refreshing this quad all the way from the fuel system to the paint and the plastic. Let's jump into it. You guys saw last episode where we got this thing running, but today we're going to make it a little better. We have some new grips for it. I'm going to put new fuel line all over everything. We got a new carburetor for it because the thread cap was stripped on the old one and on our spare one over there. We're going to be deleting the ignition system that Yamaha puts on top of their carburetors. Then we're gonna be stripping all the plastics, repainting the frame a little bit, making it look pretty, and just straightening this thing out overall. First up, let's strip all these plastics down so we have some space to tear everything else apart. Next on the agenda, we're gonna take this tank off and clean it out. I know there's a third of a tank of fuel in here, and when I turn this from on to reserve to off, nothing comes out into this line. So we're plugged in there somewhere. We're going to dump this into a bucket, clean out this pepcock, and put all new fuel lines on the quad. Ew, look at all the stuff that came out of there. We got, I don't even know what that is, leaves and grass and bugs and not good stuff. Okay, now we'll take that pep talk out, make sure it's clean, and then put some new sealant and throw her back in. It's all clean. It's as easy as taking one screw, two screw out, and then there's just two different straw lengths in there with filters on the end that you gotta clean out. Apply a new piece of fuel line. And now, we're gonna take out this carb, this stock carb, and we ordered I don't know if it's going to be any good, but we ordered one of these nibby carburetors off Amazon and deleted the uh, torque system on top of it. Looks like it's simpler, it just has an air screw and an idle screw. I don't know if it's going to be good, but it's simpler, it's going to take up a lot less space now that that's deleted. And uh, yeah, I don't know, we'll give it a shot, it's worth the 60 bucks we paid for it just to see. Look at the size difference between these two things. So this monstrosity on top, to my understanding, is just like a throttle limiting system. If your throttle gets stuck wide open, that'll stop your engine from going kerblammo. But we don't want that anymore because we typically have enough reaction time to just shut it off. So this one now, it's in place, it's not tightened in yet, but replacing a carb is super simple, right? Just run your cable all the way up, pop that cap off this handle here. And all you gotta do is feed this end of the cable into this holder. You just like feed it in 90 degrees and then it'll slip under that C-clip and snap into place. So as you can see, this thumb pulls on that cable on that end and then moves your slide on this end. Super simple. Next up, we're gonna tighten this guy into place and while all the plastics are off, we're gonna take the opportunity to just clean this bad boy up, get some leaves out, and then I think we're gonna cover some stuff up and spray a little bit of primer and gray up the frame again. Because there's been a lot of rubbing is racing and some asshole kept driving this into barbed wire fences, so it needs a little love. Got the gray put on after a brake clean bath. I was just telling my wife, it's a 2020 quad. It looks good from 20 feet away or at 20 miles an hour. It's fine. It covers up all the rust and it's all a uniform color again. While that tacks up, we're gonna split these hand guards off and put on some new ones because these ones leave guts all over your hands and this one's basically disassembled already. Just take your favorite one-handed knife. Cut right down these things. They should peel right off. You can even do this in one take. They're like butter. There's nothing left of them. 
Okay, let's go get the new ones. Put a little bit of spray paint in these. It'll help them slide onto the handlebars and then when the spray paint dries, it will tack up and they will stay. It's like WD-40 plus glue. Before we get too ahead of ourselves here, let's get that fuel tank put back on and get a little bit of fuel put in it. And then we'll see how that carb runs before we put back on all the plastics and take a look at some headlight wiring. We put a tiny amount of fuel in here, just enough to pick up in the reserve. Opened up that Pepcock over there. I mean, so far no dripping, so that's nice. So first we're gonna turn this air screw all the way in with a smaller screwdriver. So turning the air screw all the way in, what it does, that makes the quad, let's see, half a turn, one full turn, one and a half turns. That's as far as we can get it. Okay, two turns. So turning that all the way in, that'll make it as rich as possible because it's letting less air in, hence the air screw. So that's bottomed out. We're gonna go half a turn, Full turn, full and a half is some weird speak, but we're gonna start there for a starting point. Now, let's give this thing a couple kick kicks and see what that carb does. Okay, so as you guys can see, it's got good fuel, it's got good spark, and that carb should at least get it running out of the box. It shouldn't have to be uh, some crazy tune out of it to get this thing running. What's happening is the Tor system that we deleted I'm not sure if it's supposed to be an open or closed system. And what it does is cuts out the throttle when it thinks it senses the car being stuck wide open. We're going to do a crazy thing right now. And we're going to take this rat's nest that came with the quad. We're going to cut everything out and we're just going to rewire it because all you need in this thing to make it run, it's very simple. You need this CDI box with its five wires coming out. You need them to go to a kill switch and those five wires will give you a headlight. And you need this voltage regulator right here. That's all you need for this quad to run. So what we're gonna do is rip out this whole wiring harness and make a new one. I think that's the best bet. That way we know there's nothing fishy going on with the grounds. And we're gonna get this thing running reliably the right way. Here's a prime example of why we've decided to just dig in and rewire this whole thing. It could be just a bad CDI box, or a voltage regulator, or just chasing a bad ground. We don't know until we rip all that tape off and find out. But it could be something simple as this, like we got one, two, three, 
foreground spliced into one and heading to the back somewhere that wasn't hooked up to anything no more, right? So, there's a lot of unnecessary systems on here that we don't need anymore. There's the oil injection, the tail lights, the torque system. We're just gonna, just gonna get rid of all of that. We went through a lot of puddles and done a bunch of jumps. There's a good chance there's a lot of corrosion in all of these. So I think it's just gonna be better to take our uh, five wires out of our CDI box and distribute them directly to where they need to go. And uh, then we know. Then we'll know for sure. I'm like all this stuff, we don't need this. What is this? Look at it, look at all the mud in there. I haven't used that forever, ever. Since we got the thing. See, look, it doesn't do nothing. So, <sighs> just keep on tearing like, like this. Where's this going? What are you doing? Look at that. Someone tied that in a knot. Probably Jesse. I don't know. Alright, we'll keep stripping. Look at all this spider's web that we pulled out of there. This is all that's left. The CDI stuff. And some power things coming out of the motor. And then the kill switch. That's the important stuff right there. I'm no journeyman electrician, but I did find this diagram on the internet that some random guy posted back in 1999, and I trust him completely. So I can follow instructions half okay. I'm gonna try that out and see what happens. Sort that out, maybe add some new wires in, get some actual ground somewhere on this frame. Let's do it. little update so as you saw there when I sprayed brake clean into it kick-started it it idle and just want to run away right now that means it was running pretty lean or the throttle blade was way too far open turns out it was a little bit of both so what you do you adjust this all the way in so that the nub of the cable can get as close to the end of the cable sheath as possible. That allows this throttle blade to come down more. That should fix the too much of the bulk air problem. Secondly, you then go to this air screw under here underneath, or the air screw on whatever carburetor you're using, and you keep screwing it in until your quad doesn't want to rev hang when you blip the throttle. So now that we have that air screw all the way in and the throttle blade isn't all the way up, If I let that air screw out at all, it starts to idle higher, higher, and then rev hang a little bit. So that tells me we could probably do with a little bigger jet. Main jet, that is. So this pack luckily came with a few. I'm gonna put one size bigger in, and that will give me a full range of adjustability with the air screw. So did you guys see there? I put in the new jet, a 118 instead of a 115. And when I was blipping the throttle there, it wasn't just blue from mixed gas. There's a little puff of black at the end, right? So that means we're running a little richer now, which is good, rich is safe. So we can lean that out a little bit to find optimal, uh, optimal power, I guess, optimal mixture at, we're at 2,800 feet here at Drayton. So we'll do some fiddling.
so there we have it. It's lichen the 118 Jet with about half a turn out on the air screw. So I guess we will put this thing back together and try to make it look pretty now. It's been a couple days and we got the quad back in the garage here. Just a few housekeeping points to take care of before you get the plastics back on. Gonna grease everything that moves. So you got those wishbones up front. You're gonna put a little bit of oil on the chain. Just stuff that's easier to do when everything's exposed. Also, we're gonna take this headlight off. I took a look inside, it's all corroded and gross and we'll either order a new one or just leave it off because it looks a little cleaner. So yeah, just uh, do a little bit of basic maintenance with these little guys here. These are awesome, these mini grease guns. They work on quads, RVs. U joints and cars, whatever. They're just the perfect size and they fit everywhere. You can put a flexible hose on it and truly fit anywhere. Just a lot easier than carrying the big old cumbersome one that usually is too much grease anyway. So yeah, let's uh, get after it and finish this thing up. That's a new one. Grease nipple broke off right in the gun. So uh, yeah, gonna have to swap that out. No big deal, that just hasn't happened to me before. Interesting. Carrying on. Everything greased and lubed up. I got some new levers coming because, well, this one's broken half and sloppy and this one does that. I'm just sloppier than Joe. So, let's get some plastics back on this thing and then we'll give them a nice little cleanup with, uh, I don't know, this. We'll try this. Got this at Canadian Tire a couple years ago. Haven't touched it. I like the fast wax they use. We haven't tried the cleaner yet, so here we go. That stuff doesn't do anything, it's just Windex. So avoid if possible. And there we have it, the plastics are back on. Gave them a little bit of a clean, the old shower and can with that weird Windex stuff. Polish didn't really do anything. That's so stained after years of just sitting in the sun under poplar trees that there's nothing you can do. But the seat's really nice. Gave it a little bit of leather conditioning so it stays nice and supple and doesn't tear. Spray painted the rims black. Uh, the only thing left to do is get them levers in and redo the wheel bearings because, uh, yeah, they're getting pretty sloppy. But, I'm gonna call that good for now. It's trail ready, and it fires up like a little peach. Oh, can't do it with my hand. What a good girl. Anyway, thanks for watching this week, guys. We appreciate you. Have yourself a lovely week. See you next Tuesday.